Welcome everybody to You of Command Live. My name is Tim, and tonight we got a very special guest, guest returning to our show, a friend by the name of Jesse Marcel. Welcome, Jesse. Hello, everybody. Jesse is the grandson of Jesse A. Marcel, the person who originally had his hands on the Roswell debris after it was delivered to the Roswell Army Airfield in 1947. So this is something we're going to get into and discuss. We're going to dig into the um, uh, case close, Roswell case close, U.S. government report, and look at the discrepancies between that and what people have said who have come forward with testimonies about the Roswell incident who were actually there, okay? And that's very important that we do that. Um, I want to introduce Odessa who's bottom left corner, who is my maven of the chat room. She is the one you want to direct questions to in regards to what, what you want to ask us on the panel. Please type them in capital letters and we will uh, see it. And she'll make sure we see it because if we don't see it the first time, she'll retype it. Oh, so yeah. I'll, <laughs> I'll see it and we'll try to get it to Jesse and have him answer your questions. Bottom right is my good friend, Noss. Uh, she is one of the, one, even though there are no experts in the field, I consider her an expert in her field. So please welcome Noss. Thank you. Um, all right. So tonight uh, we're going to bring Jesse up here and uh, we're going to ask him a little bit about himself. Jesse, can you tell people who know you or who don't know you? A little bit about your background and how how you became um, recognizable within the UFO community. Well, I think um, I guess it all started like when I was a young child, and uh, you know, around the dinner table, um, topics come up. Uh, we, are, my father, was a huge fan of science fiction, and thereby I became one. And uh, during those discussions, I, I just recall one where he was saying it's actually about Star Trek. And uh, he mentioned something along the lines of, you know, this is a fun story, it's fictional, that kind of thing, but, you know, there's some reality behind life in the universe. And that was kind of how it kicked off. And it was more like, you know, we, we talked a lot about it. So your grandfather was involved in what was a, a crashed, you know, with a, a UFO um, many years ago. And, uh, and it, it kind of built from there. It was kind of fascinating. Uh, we went through some details and it was it was kind of funny as a as a, as a child you go you, you're in this atmosphere and you're talking about UFOs and you're talking about aliens and and uh, it was it was it was always a very uh, comforting thought actually it was never like oh they're coming to get us or something like that it's more like yeah your your brothers and sisters are out there and and the universe is a very amazing place and, and you know all that kind of thing and uh, when you when you're it's funny stuff. We had these conversations, and you know, sooner or later, out we, we lived out in the countryside, and you know, riding our motorcycles around, or you know, playing basketball or something like that. And we're talking, well, how was your night? So like, good. I learned a little more about Roswell. And they're like, what are you, what are you talking about? We I mean people talk about UFOs, and yeah, no, but nobody did. And it was, it was kind of funny just growing up in that because it was, it was such a normal, regular thing for us. It wasn't like a, you know, we just thought, well, this is part of, you know, whatever he knows. But at that time, you're talking about the you know, the late seventies, early seventies, those kind of things in the middle seventies. And it just wasn't. Um, and we, we were, we went back and forth to down to where my, my grandparents at that time lived in Houma, Louisiana. And uh, so of course getting down there as a very, uh, a, a child with a big imagination and a lot of wonderment, you know, talked to my grandfather and what was this about and that kind of thing. And it was always fun. Uh, the story about, we, we did a lot of fishing behind his house and lived on a bayou. So in those conversations, we talked about UFOs, about World War II, about everything. But I, I kind of learned, I, I'd be, you learned a lot more about my grandfather and, and, and the intricacies of Roswell. And that was kind of the start of it. So it was something that kind of followed us through growing up, you know, elementary school and high school. And um, ended up by getting, when I, when I was finished with college, I went back and, and got a little more involved. It was fun. I thought, you know, hey, write a book or, you know, do documentary. And then you're always being approached by different, because of the name, um, different 
and networks, you know, those kind of things and, and whatever. So you start getting interviews and, you know, maybe you're on a show or two and that's just kind of what developed. So it's, for me, it's kind of one of those things, you know, it's, it's, it's of interest to me in a fascination and a, a scientific level. I try to stay out of all the, you know, the conspiracy stuff and, and then those kind of things. We try to base things on, you know, why not, you know, and, and, and not the frailties of, of humanity where you're trying to come out with a predecessor, you know, we need this. So find out ways to prove that that theory is correct or not correct or something like that. So right. I try to leave, I, I don't, I really don't subscribe too much to the government when it comes to this stuff or any government. I'm some of, some of the governments in smaller countries, South, you know, Southern, yeah, Brazil and, you know, wherever it's a different topic. It's kind of funny. It's like, there isn't, you know, Uruguay, Argentina, all these, it, they, they have departments that investigate this stuff and it's not met with a, a certain amount. No, nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. Kind of thing. Like it feels like it's mm-hmm. as bad as it was, but anyway, so no, just, just indoctrinated into it and then just grew up with it. Um, I, you know, I think, I, I think that uh, anybody growing up with that kind of information or that open-mindedness, you end up by living a life where you're not so much, constrained i guess in your thoughts in the way things work around you because you realize there's so much more out there and it's just it's just like you know you, you stop you you don't you don't you know box yourself in common thing um in the the way you think about things you you, you leave room for almost anything that's possible so I, I gotta say it's amazing how much is out there that people don't recognize or even see and if they heard it they would have a harder time wrapping their head around some of it than, than they would the UFO or alien answer. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, Nos, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, uh, I was was just think, think along the same lines as, uh, as what you were talking about. And it's kind, kind of the analogy there is that everyone else is operating with a shorter runway. Right. You know, their, yeah. their conceptual limitations of, what they could possibly invent, what they could possibly create. They've, they've set themselves a, a, such a small area to work with that, you know, uh, they're, they're not going to get a lot further. Yeah. I, I mean, when, when you think about things on, I mean, you almost, you're almost talking about the philosophical idea at some point mm-hmm. and science and how it blends together and, and your openness to things can dictate your perception of those, your, you know, you know, I don't care what you say. This doesn't exist. And, you know, somebody could be knocking on your door, and you're like, "No." You know, it's, I think if you're open to it, your your mind's available. You make do incredible things, and it's just like if you're if you're if you're willing to cross that line and think, "Well, what if?" Then everything is amazing. And if you're not, then I mean, there's some very unhappy people out there, and I think they just need to they just expand themselves past their immediate world. They realize how wonderful things. I mean, how amazing and incredible life and the universe are. And unfortunately, you know, it's. And I don't say I'm not that way. I'm not by no means, you know. But it's if you can just take yourself out of yourself and just and just, you know, be something bigger. It's just like everything is fascinating and everything is interesting. It's just it's it, you know, right. Okay, Odessa. <laughs> Well, hi, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. I wasn't here the last time you were here, so I'm really glad to be here this time. Um, I'm, I'm glad to, to get to hear a little bit more about your side. Um, you know, growing up, that's got to be really interesting to have such an open and welcoming kind of, um, I don't know, situation when it comes to UFOs and aliens. I definitely didn't have that. Um, so it's, uh, it's unusual for me, and it's, it's very cool to kind of hear about that side of things. Um, it's not something you hear about much, you know, nobody really talks about that, but I imagine growing up in any experiencer's family, uh, you would know from a younger age and have kind of a different perspective on everything. So thanks for being here and sharing that with us. I appreciate it personally. I think that's great. Thank you so much. Well, we were yeah. talking about that. Girl. My, my, my father, one day <laughs> he walked in the backyard with a shovel of plastic and started digging a hole. And within a year, we had the biggest telescope in Montana. Oh wow! And he, and he, he built he built the foundation. <laughs> we helped him grind the mirrors, and the whole I mean everything. He actually he actually built, I would think one of the first computers to direct it. It wasn't really a thought back then. We actually wound coils. 
they yeah. were they were on or off back you know one or zero yeah. and he built yeah. he built a computer to direct it which is way ahead of time and yeah. he did it because he wanted to be in touch with what i mean he just wanted to do more but he was also i mean he was a medical doctor and that kind of thing so he obviously was a very public man with kind of that kind of stuff but he wanted to bring in everybody into astronomy and the idea of the cosmos and it was really cool growing up because yeah entire classrooms of, of kids were up to school would come in and everybody around be, would go in this little room underground room and they look up to the telescope and that kind of thing but so yeah we were right. we we're fully immersed but it was again a very very positive experience absolutely it sounds like it it sounds wonderful nice. uh we have a question from the chat room has jesse ever gone back to his father's childhood home and done some digging my grandfather's yes probably what they mean yeah i think that's what they mean heck yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dig, dig. Yeah, we are, we are investing. Yeah, there, there is. I, I mean, that whole mystery. You know, there, we know there's stuff out there, and where does it make sense? And we've heard. You know, I, I have people that do tell me, well, I think there's a piece in a book somewhere, or so. Just got. You know, there's continually a little bit of investigating about trying to find out where you know some of this stuff ended up at. So you know, I, I, it's there. It's a matter of finding it and proving it but uh there, there's a what's interesting because this roswell some stuff comes in from all over the world to get tested that kind of thing they're fascinating they're similar to the roswell story but yeah so my, my dad always said that the stuff ended up just like in he said this before indiana jones the movie he said it's probably in a crate in some big government warehouse right. stuck away somewhere and then he said that and then like five years later in Indiana Jones, it came out that the Roswell stuff was in a crate. In, it's, it's yeah. Probably, probably yeah. But yeah, it's 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 out there. It's 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 there to be found. It's it's somewhere. Right. Information seems to always be hidden with within the paragraphs of fiction. So yeah. I, I always read fiction UFO books because mm -hmm. some, sometimes you will find fact hidden in there. Uh, what I was going to say about um, going back to dig. Right. Yeah. Didn't some people recently go back to the crash site and uh, go to the actual spot where the gouge was and do some digging, and they actually came up with metal fragments? There, there is some. There, there are some fragments that are being have have been and are being tested um, from people in Roswell. There, so that has happened. We did this little uh, this uh, little history series. And we brought they brought LADAR and everything else and, and, and did a lot of different work. And it looks like, you know, it's, it's, you know, heavily overgrown now or as far as that kind of area can be overgrown. Um, it shows some peculiarities to certain areas that shouldn't be there like it is. Yeah. Um, so there, there is definitely some, you know, it, you know, unfortunately, it's like everything else is funding. Um, but it, it, there is evidence that there is a site with with this uncharacteristic that is, you know, looks like something maybe crashed there, um, and that's what's been picked up so far. And that, and we're just on the on the edge of that of that research. But there is a lot. I I, I can't I can't imagine there's not other people out there doing this kind of thing or other, you know. Right. Um, I've heard that area is off limits to uh, most of the public. That you got to get special permission from the people that actually own that land, that actually have that site there. I, you know, I, 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 the, I was told that I've never, I, the, I, I know there, there, there's a, a gentleman that has a, a tour company in Roswell and they go out and apparently and visit the site. So I'm not right. quite sure they visit from wow. afar or I, I've never been on that, but I, you know, something like that. I, you know, I know there's that, you know, where, where I know where the technology is showing it compared to where people are looking might not be the same place, but it's, it's all right. the same right. area. Right. Um, I've seen two pictures of the crash site. The first one was completely flat, and the second one had a small rise with like a, a, a hill on one edge where there could have been something that came in and dug into the, the hill. From yeah. what I understand from all reports that I've read and testimonies I've heard, and I've heard a lot, uh, there was a small hill. So the flat one, might be something that wasn't discussed, or maybe it was the second crash site. I don't know. But um, I do know that there was one with a hill. What I was going to say was 
Um, the government report leaves a lot to be desired because in my opinion, as, after reading it twice, uh, there's a lot of discrepancies uh, uh -huh. between uh -huh. what what people claim to have remembered of the actual event that were actually there in in that time frame yeah. to what was portrayed in the account itself from the US government. Now, what gets me is what we were talking about before we came on stream was how could a gouge that supposedly had strewn, had strewn debris over a mile area, mm -hmm. right? How could it make a gouge in the ground if it was a neoprene balloon with balsa wood and tin foil targets on it and possibly one anthropomorphic dummy? How could it make a huge gouge in the ground, in well, my opinion, and strew debris that far away? I, I, I can't. Well, I have there, there, there's, there's so many problems with that story, you know, as far as it being like a raw and I mean, it started out as being a weather balloon. That's kind of story. But that might have not been. It might not. It, it, they just put out a very simple story. But that, you know, that these neoprene balloons. What, and what's interesting is that the like, and this is just for my grandfather when we were talking. It's like these yeah. neoprene balloons, especially out, you know, out in the sun, that kind of thing really smelled awful. Yeah, yeah and you, 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 you it's, 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 there was none of that out there. But you know, past all that, that kind of thing, it's like, you know, the when, if you found a Rowan target that went off course, then the Rowan target was a series of, you know, they're, they, what, what they, what, they're very simple. It was balloons that carried up these basically triangular, tri triangular, you know, uh, parts. Placards. Yeah, yeah that, that, that focused, uh, focused uh, sound. To a microphone, <laughs> and what they, they're, they're designed to go up and listen to nuclear blasts across the ocean. That's all they were. It, it was basically the, these, these these shaped forms were made from balsa wood and you know tin foil that kind of thing. And that right. is very 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 simple. There was nothing there was nothing advanced about it whatsoever. I may have time it was a novel idea, but that was the best. And if you're when one went, went off course and you were to find one, there's a little tag on them, and it said call this number, and they gave you like five bucks. But the whole thing, a Rowan target would fit in a trash can. There's not yeah. much. You could fit all the pieces in a trash can. It wasn't like, and you know, the, the amount of debris that my grandfather encountered filled multiple trucks, numerous trucks. And that was the first crash site. And it's like, you get those, you know, things like, well, if you, if every single Rowan target ever made crash in that same place, it still wouldn't have been enough debris, which obviously ridiculous, yeah. but, but it's, it's, it's just like these, again, these, these, uh, the, the the idea doesn't fit. I mean, it, it made sense. You know, it's like, well, yeah, there was similar materials. It was like a tin foil, aluminum. You know, they, they they said that there was, you know, like the sticks, and they said there was they're held together by Christmas tape because after the war you couldn't get Scotch tape for some reason, which obviously they anybody could prove that that's wrong. But they said the Scotch tape that had there was has, was from Christmas had the symbol had these symbols that burnt in on the on the on the balsa wood that kind of thing. But it's it's just it's kind of ridiculous it's like on its face if you actually get down into it it's like you know I, you know could it have been well i don't know you know my 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 grandfather would have had to have been very uh you know what do you want to call it uh, wanted to misdirect everybody for some reason including my dad and then including his grandkids including the motivation his grandkids. Right? yeah why would you misdirect people over a, a benign weather balloon because something nos pointed out to me uh, before we talk to you today, was the U.S. government actually let a classified program float endlessly over the countryside and then lose it, which was flight four, right? And then not go out and look for it? Right. That seems like they didn't care anyways about the balloon. So the point is, when this was all going down to, to classify it with such a presence of military mm -hmm. was impressive. Now they're, they're saying, Oh, well, the government can't cover all this up. Oh yeah, they can. They can just stop talking about it. But the thing is back then, did we have records concerning the crash? 
uh, according to the case closed report, we did not. But I don't know. You know, I, I, I know a little bit through, you know, personal writings and those kind of things. You know, and we we do have a lot of the records that were supposed to have burnt up. You know, that that file cabinet right. containing the July right. 1947. Alberta. We, we have those. But it, it's it, there's it's just like, back, back to the idea, you know, about the, about the raw and target. I mean, they put it on the front page. It's like at what time did, has any government ever put their latest top secret program on the front page? Never. To prove mm -hmm. point? It just, right. Right. It's it just, you know, not that it couldn't happen, but it's just, just these, you add this all up and it just doesn't make sense. You know, whatever, say it wasn't a UFO, say it was, say it was some kind of a advanced military vehicle that they needed to cover up. So they gave up one for the other or something like that. But I, mm -hmm. you know, my, my grandfather being the head of intelligence was aware of a lot of the technology, you know, all the way from the, the nuclear bombing programs to bikini beach to all of all, the whole, he was in, you know, Oppenheimer, the whole, he was, he was along for that whole thing. As, as the head of intelligence, it, it's like it, this guy would know the difference. He had, he had, he took, yeah. he, he had a diploma in radar training school at that time. So he knew what he was looking at. So it's like the only way, it, I mean, it was no mistake. He either intended to mislead everybody or it was something else. I mean, it's, it's black and white. It can't be one or the other. And, yeah. and, you know, and again, you know, to the point where, you know, it, it going through the family and, and never, you know, like everybody has assuming these deathbed confessions and those kind of things about, oh, this is actually what it was. Well, that never happened. He, he stayed with the whole thing all of his life till the last minutes of his life. It's just, it, it, again, it doesn't make sense. And, and again, as we talked briefly, it's like, and it just wasn't him. And there's a lot of strange things going on over the town of Roswell the preceding days and weeks. It's it's just like, it, you know, it, it could have been something else. Of course it could have been. Is it, you know, it's, but you get back to the idea, but you know, it, it's, you know, the crazy where the simplest answer is that it probably was something kind of interesting, you know, so. Right. Yeah. And you were saying that it appeared in the paper, the weather balloon. Yeah. But it, this also appeared in the paper. So, um, but the, then after this appeared in the paper, right? Right. And then they put out the weather balloon story uh, to cover it up, in my opinion. Um, I have to say that when I was showing you earlier today, let me see if I can find it. Yeah, it, uh, they're saying that the recovered flying disc is a cover-up story to protect Project Mogul, mm -hmm. which is almost like a flip psyop of, well, what if Project Mogul was a cover-up story to protect the disc? Uh, it, it, I mean, the Project Mobile existed for a while. It's, 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 it was it was it was created after the second. I might have been created during the Second World War, but it, it's it's just it's interesting. Like I said, it it doesn't. If somebody in the know, they they can think of well, how how are we how are we going to you know basically nothing to see here. Look the other way, and and the and putting the Mogul Project on, the, on you know those kind of things. Just, people didn't even know what the Mogul Project was until they started talking about it right there. It's like why right. why would you, why, why would you go? Why would you even care? And, and, and that's the big thing is I, I'm not quite sure, you know, the best thing the government could have done was just not talked about it again. If that would have been it. But, you know, again, if there's just, you know, human nature, it's just, it's just interesting how the whole thing evolved. And of course, we're still talking about it today, but it, it's just it, it just doesn't, you know, what, whatever it was, it just doesn't fit the bill of what they were saying it was or, you know, it was, it was yeah. easy. You know, I mean, I have my own personal beliefs, absolutely, about it, what it was, you know, that, it, that I believe like what my grandfather believed. But it's just, you know, I, I, and there, there's it's just there's so much more of a story to this. These these little outlying surface, you know, it could have been this. Right, it right, been that, right, you know, kind of thing. right. I also have a question for you. Why would a weather balloon that all these soldiers that were at the RAF Roswell Armory Airfield familiar with right mm -hmm. why would it be put in this building under guard it, it, it's it's that they all would have known what it was so they you know as if it was a mogul balloon it, it wouldn't have been i i mean literally they put these things in trash cans you know yeah, when they're right there, there was nothing in fact they they would throw away except for the, they have a little microphone and stuff that they would keep for the information that they're you know to study if there's any sounds but yeah it's like no none of that would have happened there would have been 
they, they you know, they, there, there are, you know, where, where they block the base from people coming in during that period. There's all kinds of things that happen. It's like, yeah, it could have been something else. Sure. But there's no evidence of that, but it's like, it's like, you know, again, it just doesn't, you know, it, it, it just doesn't fit very well. You know, can they, you, can yeah. you tell us how many trucks of debris were carted away from the craft site? Um, somewhere between three and five. And this is my brother is who he, he did, he did a small stint in the military too. These, uh, these basically large, large axle troop transports. They yeah. said it between three and five of those filled with debris to carry it off. And then, and, and, and this is more, you know, and they said like my, like my grandfather had, had mentioned at one time, uh, this is not this kind of common knowledge in the story is that they sent people in to vacuum it up to take everything out of there. And, you know, they found metal you know, they, and they have, you know, people found metal, little metal bits and that kind of thing. What fascinates me is, I mean, this, this place is, in the middle of nowhere. I mean, go to nowhere and go a little further, and that's where this is at. And they found military shirt buttons from the from, from the forties, and those kind of things. Like, how in the those world? Are the most important elements of the find, yeah. as far as I'm concerned. Exactly. It, that exactly. It's like it's like at the end of the day, it does it make sense there were military personnel out in the middle of absolute nowhere, and, and you know where a button pops off or something like that. Again, those don't you know. It, it just doesn't make sense as long as you believe the people have found them. But I, you know, it's like there, there was, a, there's a certain thing. It's like, it just doesn't make sense. Yeah. You know, crawling so, on the ground, searching for weather balloon parts. Yeah. It right. makes yeah, no right. sense. Yeah. They, you know, and there, there's wind patterns that were show where it could have gone. You look through all this kind of thing and like, could it have gone there? And it's like, you know, in, in a, it, the wind patterns didn't dictate that it could have ended up anywhere even near where they said it landed because one dis one did go go you know go below missing basically and there's 18 or something like that that um, they were setting up but it, it's just like uh, again they, they would have uh, well, and as you said it correctly it's like they wouldn't have put it you know take it put it in a hangar it would have never it would have sat in a he would have sat in a garbage can out front they might have taken the thing they, they would have wouldn't even, there was no reason to do that in fact project mogul they just had something hey we found one of your things come and get it i mean kids got right. paid five bucks to to hand them a recorder from it. It's like, no, this was not any big deal, but yeah, they, they went through such scrutiny at the time, you know, and they, you know, and it just boils down to either this is a conspiracy by the base, by the city, by everybody connected with it. And they all can scheme to create this whole setup or there's something else. And it's just like, yeah, it doesn't, that people don't work that way. You can, you can't get three people to do the same thing at one time. Regardless, it's just like, there's a certain logic flaw in all of that story. You know, they, regardless right. of what it was, it's just like it just doesn't, doesn't add up. Just, the, just the basic. Right. But this has a question for us: Who now has possession of the eye bar that was found and shown to your grandfather, children, with the glyphs on it? Stay tuned. We're searching for it. We would like to know for sure. I got a picture of it. This is the yeah. eye bar. Hard to read the glyphs, but um, the glyphs have been compared to ancient Greek. Mm -hmm. and and at there, one, there, there, that that I, I I hate to put it, but that's fake. That that that's that a fake right one. Up. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I I, I and not that I don't. I, I'm I'm in the old, like I, I don't know if you can see this. We did. Yeah, sorry to come through. Anyway, uh, of the of uh, you know, I, it's a it's a co as a combination of the symbols of my grandfather and father in the head. All they you know, I'll, I'll, I'll throw those. But they were you know not saying that that couldn't be real that there was another piece that had some symbols on it that didn't match the ones that my grandfather and father saw. Right. I mean, possible, but I, I, I'm, I, I, most of my studies are actually investigating is, is, is with the symbols and trying to, trying to figure out meaning behind them. And, and that I've spent decades doing that. And right. what you showed me right there did, was not representative of anything I've looked at. I mean, as far as studied. Right. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for clarifying that. At least we know Good that question. now. About um, that, if you uh, have, you were trying to show us something this, with the symbols that were more accurate. Yeah. Um, if you're willing at some point to send Tim or I a picture, we very much would like to post a picture, at least on our Facebook group, um, so that people can see a more accurate picture. I, I hate to give bad information. So, if yeah, you can. same here. It's, it's yeah. a, I mean, there, there's so much. I see stuff out there that our family supposedly endorsed that we've never even seen before. Well, that's well, why I'm asking right. you specifically. Like, yeah, it, it would be good. It'd be good. Yeah, any of any of our, I, I, you know, as far, like I said, we're. I'm not saying it, it's not possible that it was something right. else that wasn't real. It, it's just it, it doesn't fit any of the things that we've studied before. 
but I'd right. be happy to. I'd be I'd be happy to. Uh, yeah, set. there's a. I, I'm doing all kinds of fun uh, novelty stuff. Uh, I've created a game. I've done all kinds of stuff. Just kind of getting people in the in the in that in that mode of thought uh, about all this right. stuff. In the but mindset. I would, I'd, yeah. be, I'd be very happy to what just send you. You can just you can just yeah. If, if you That'll want. work. Um, uh, yeah, we'll be happy to put up anything you want to send our way. Um, in regards to um, the letter that was in the hand of the officer sitting next to Jesse, uh, a lot of people have tried to translate it. I've seen two different copies of it, one which describes the Mogul Project and one which describes uh, this. But I don't know which one is legit, which one has veracity. Uh, this says, and the victims of the wreck in the disc, they will ship, which kind of indicates that they had bodies. But then again, I saw a different letter that had the same words in it, but mm -hmm. spaced out with different other words that was explaining the uh, Project Mogul balloon system. So, it, it, you know, I don't know. I, I, all I can I, I can speak to my, my my father was deeply interested in that letter, very excited about it as being something that's legitimate, and 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 my dad I mean he he just I mean he was obviously closer than I was, but he was he was quick to question some of the information that floated out there if it went against what they were involved with, you know their right. their right. what they had felt handled and that kind of thing. And uh, but he what's interesting is a lot of things didn't excite my father, but that letter did. Right. Um, yeah. And, and that and that and, and they're showing about victims. That, I mean, that's that's what he was very fascinated and was that. Did, did he believe in the fact that there were victims? We talked about that. He, th th this is I always try to try to err or on the side of of of, uh, of being careful. My my right. grandfather would tell us as the family as kids and the rest of it that uh he was involved in the first crash site the field and that's where a lot of you know a lot of this debris that we're talking about came from and uh he said that you know and there's talking what about the alien bodies he said well i did have people that i worked with that were a part of investigating that crash site and he his thing with us was yeah and you can believe what they told you which you can put together. He was he was a little bit careful about what he told us because he was still being harassed. My dad was definitely being harassed. I'm you know the, the, as a grandkids, not really. I mean some you know I I mean some I guess, but not really. Um, but there was a point at which he did not want to see his family being, you know, harassed about anything he would tell us. So he he did it. it, it I like I I've, I've said it a thousand times, but it's like. He'd always wink and say, and there's so much more I just simply can't tell you. And part of that is, I mean, he, he, he was not like a, you know, a man that tried to create mystery, but he was trying to be careful, that kind of thing. But he did, he said the people that did talk about the bodies were telling the truth. So. Okay, we do have a question from the chat room again. Yeah. Um, why do you think that even after the government admitted UFOs are real, that they still don't talk about Roswell? It, 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 you're right. It, it, it's, it's kind of a personal, you know, how, how we've talked about it as being Marcel's. And mm -hmm. then how we've talked about it. There, there's a lot of very powerful attorneys involved in this and then the rest of it. Um, and what's kind of fascinating is the idea that the government at that time spent so much effort what we consider as being disinformation that mm -hmm. if they came back and said, Oh, by the way, we've been telling lies for seven years about that event. They're thinking that might, you know, and, 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 you know, might not, but it might be one of the reasons why it's, it, it's easier to dismiss and not take ownership of my mm -hmm. grandfather was with a uh, 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 head of center appropriations back in the uh, eighties. And uh, what people he met with one person he met with anyway, said that it was real. And yeah. there, I think I've talked about the story. So it's, it's kind of fascinating. It's like he was brought to 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 because the, they're trying to figure out how tax dollars were still being spent to cover up Roswell. Right. And that was Why? the whole that was the whole gist. And they said it's, we're not here to argue that Roswell's real or not. And the gentleman said it was. You know, by by the way they were looking at it, they said how in the world they're trying to figure out 
And I'm not quite sure how they yeah. figured my dad would know. They're trying to figure out how all this money was was funneled in these organizations to basically disrupt the story of Roswell and stop it. And that, and and that was that if it wasn't real. Yeah. Why, why would you bother? Why would you care? Why would you spend any money trying to? So it's it, it's it'd be a non-event. It'd be in, exactly. in a way the government's created half of what's going on with the continuation of Roswell and all the rest of this. Is there, you know, their ability to try to try to, you know, try to try to look over there, not over here. Now I want to look yeah. over here twice as much, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we have a question from Live Light on the ch on the chat room. I missed the first fifteen minutes. For maybe this was answered as Jesse ever had his own UFO and or alien experiences. Well, I can talk to two different things. When I was a child, I and my brother John and my father were we, we grew up in Montana out at, 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 at actually my Helena. And we were driving along, and I, 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 one of us saw something in the sky, and it, it was it, it was it was visible. It didn't didn't make sense. It was an airplane or that kind of thing. And my dad actually pulled over so we could take a look at it for a while, and we actually did perfectly silent, something hovering out there, and then an instant it just disappeared. So we always thought, well, that's kind of fun, you know, as as we, that we all saw this thing, and it, it was definitely an unidentified flying object of some kind that didn't act like anything we'd seen before. Um, and then, uh, any alien experiences, I, you know, personally, people say that I get affected by aliens all the time, but I, if I do, I don't know about it, but it's, I, I you know, I think that information, transference of information, collective <laughs> ideas and thoughts are a real process. Everything's waves, waves affect everything, you know, not to get too, you know, uh, uh, too out there, but it's like. I can't believe with something that's of great intelligence that we all don't experience something related to it. Everybody, you know, whether you accept it, deny it or whatever, that it affects us on a level, you know, there's, there's always been the thoughts about, well, your grandfather handled it. You handle it. Obviously I'm the progeny you know, of my father, et cetera. Do we have some kind of a connection somewhere? You know, it's one of those things. Yeah, you could, you know, maybe I don't know. It'd be kind of fun if it's true. I have no idea. You know, I, I wouldn't say it one way or other. But there is, a, we we've had a, in our family. It seems like you know we've had been able to, you know, have a kind of an acute understanding and a very high level of peace with all of this. Right. It's like none of us are fearful of, you know, something out there that's evil or you know. So people say it's like when you get down to if I just go off this edge a little bit, I'll go too far on it, but. It's like, well, that though there's gonna be they're gonna come and take our resources, they're gonna come do this. If you have the ability to go from say one system to another system, you can trade change any kind of matter into any other kind of matter you want. There there is not there's not such a thing as a limited resource when you get high, high enough technology, when you have the energy to do it. So it's like everything kind of falls apart. It's fun science uh, on sci-fi level, but on a real up you know, science level when you look at things. You know, I, it, it's all related. Whatever's out there, we're related to it too. You know, and I think. Oh well, yeah, if, it, if then, if they yeah. have this, then they can have this and don't need this. Yeah, like they, that exactly. There, there is there there is no you know, and and you would hope you know. There's all these ideas that why why aren't we experiencing more of it? Is it is it does societies always evolve to the point where they destroy themselves? You know, that's one of the thoughts. Is that is that what's yeah. going on? That we, we there should be more out there. Or on the flip side, you get evolved. You know, what, what's what's kind of fun is like you think about you see an airplane go over, you know, if something's really advanced and they want you to think or you put up a, a, a technology that makes it look like an airplane flying over with the noise and the sound. How would you know, you know, obviously as an individual on the scan on the, on the ground looking up at it, you're not going to know the difference. If, if you're that high of a tech, I mean, right now there is I, I saw something. It's, it's fascinating where you can do with bending light to make things transparent. You know, right. you think that and, and that's us. You know, think to, yeah. you know, go for it a thousand years. You know, they, we couldn't we couldn't pull that off. I'm sure we could. I mean, they were kind of close to it right now. So it's 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 mm -hmm. all of those kind of ideas. And and you know, would would they want to stay hidden from us? You know, I suppose. I think if we we're scientists. Would we? I I don't know. But uh, but no. Back to that. Back to the whole thing is. I I think there's I, I think there's intelligence in the universe, and I think we all can be part of that. Actually, not can be that we are part of that intelligence. And it's how far into it we want to let ourselves go. And I think it's 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 a mistake not to, you know, I, you know, compared to them, we're, ba we're barely out of a cave. But 
it's like the more you're willing to experience a level of intelligence throughout the universe or around us everywhere you know it, it's like a lot of these trivial things you know are that, that's what they are they're trivial you know they're 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 problems that humans have created for themselves it's not the universe that's created for us so right. yeah i have to i have to ask this question before i go to the next panelist uh alfredo from uh france from france says jesse marcel do you have abduction in your family no time loss that Missing kind of thing. time there you go my, my father has but uh but <laughs> i'm so oblivious to time i wouldn't know but uh <laughs> but yeah the time loss that kind of thing any kind of you know abduction <laughs> not not in that sense where I'd look at it is, is maybe on a very high level of experiencing intelligence and being able to understand and, and understand things that might be harder to grasp. And, and maybe that's, a, maybe somebody who's really perceptually smart in this world and somebody who's not is just, they're simply how they can fit into the whole bigger picture or something like that. It's right. just, you know, it might, you know, uh, so it's more philosophical than anything else, but I, I do believe it. it's like there, there's no reason to think that the way we, I mean, there's, we're such complex organisms, how our thoughts go, how our process, our consciousness works and that kind of thing that, you know, it's like, you're really cutting yourself short to think that there's not so much more around us and out there. And maybe, you know, right here in the same room as you are, you know, you're just not aware of it kind of thing. Okay. Another question for you. Do you believe there is still more to uncover or understand about the Roswell incident. And if so, what avenues of investigation you find most promising? I, I look at it as, you know, and, and this is kind of uh, on the surface is we're out looking for parts. And, 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 you know, a step out of that possible genetic variations at that time period. You know those kind of things. Were there were there biological and material evidence that we're only? I mean, some of the some of the stuff on the biological level we're only starting to understand now in our last you know 15 years maybe. So were there distinct changes in certain you know in certain parts of, of the of, of people are exposed to this or you know or anything like that? Has have is there an impression? Or is there a change of some kind? So on mm -hmm. on a biological and a material. That, that to me the biological is far more interesting but uh it, it's like yeah is, is is there was there a shift was there a change because of of this happening or any of these right happening? i'm supposed to ask you this question from matt from second star survival and he says i'm just asking this question to make a lot of people realize that the government isn't out to get everyone Jesse, are you ever visited by men in black after you do interviews, or do you feel like you are being tracked? I, when we grew up, we had our phones tapped. It wasn't hidden, you know. In fact, in any way, we we knew it was happening. They would let you know, more or less let us know it was happening. Um, and I, I've never as a I'm trying. I, I go. I go at it. Is that everything you say is being listened to, right? And if you say Roswell or, or this kind of thing, I, I would. I would imagine. I, I mean, I, I. I can go back to a, a short little story because I. I. My day job is basically. I, I, I'm an inventor. I invent propulsion technologies and those kind of things for companies. And uh, in that, I've been approached, or actually, I, I was. I. I I've, a number of patents all over the world in different countries and that kind of thing. And at one point our government shut me down and said, until I should sign affidavits that I am not getting information from our government or our department of energy or NASA and not all these kind of things, they wouldn't let me continue my work. So thinking the people are watching what you're doing. Yes, it's happening. Did they find out what I was doing? They, them, whatever. You know, it's it, it's interesting because I push around a lot of paper, so to speak, when you do patents, there's just, a, just a, a lot of headaches involved. And yet they knew, someone knew enough to halt me in my tracks momentarily um, until I was willing to sign an affidavit saying that I wasn't getting this from us. So it's right. it's kind of funny. Does that mean anything? Probably not. Maybe it does. I don't know. But they but definitely aware of what we're, what, what I was doing, so. Right. 
if that makes um, sense. Yes, it does. Um, I've noticed that when I do live streams about certain sensitive subjects, sometimes I get interference from my end of my streaming platform. Mm -hmm. And I wonder sometimes if they're shutting me down or if they're if they're messing with my stream, because I do know that I hear people tapping my phone, uh, my cell phone. Actually, I have a tap on it. They're listening to whatever we say. Because they want to know whether we're spreading the disinformation narrative or whether we're getting close to the truth. And if we're getting close to the truth, should we should we be shut down or what? That's what I think they're doing. But, um, you know, recently with the report coming out that there is no supportive information to indicate alien life Mm -hmm. visited Earth or that we've had any UFOs here. to me, is a big hoax by the U.S. government. It, they're they're just trying to close to slam the lid down on the subject for now, so they can bring it out and parade it around when they need something else to talk about from daily life issues. Uh, just I, I agree. because because yes, we're one of the only countries that does that. Russia, China, ever they, they all talk about it openly. Is uh, all these different country, companies countries talk about alien stuff and it's it's so it's, inter- it's interesting why the u.s is so trying to you know keep people from thinking that there might be something else out there but if you if, if you're a if you want to basically have your have your citizens believe that you are the ultimate entity out there you're the strong you're we're, we're going to protect you we're watching after you don't look over there you know i, I you kind of get that idea you know it might not be exactly true but it's also like the more you can shut down anything outside of the power of the mighty U.S. government or whatever, the better you are. And it, it just it, it definitely has that feeling because, yeah, these other countries, they don't care. You know, it's like China built, a, you know, a huge, you know, a huge t- you know, devices to listen to the universe because they they want to learn of scientific or, or technologies from foreign alien from aliens that they can use here on Earth. So they're even that they're it's like they're not hiding it. They spent a fortune doing this stuff. That it's interesting. It's like why would it, why would government spend fortunes doing this if there wasn't evidence of it somewhere? But I I haven't talked to anybody anywhere that, that you know. Of course, it's a little slighted because my you know my my last name of course, but that has an experience. Governments uh, that have experienced something, some un, unknown whatever you know that, and it's it's, it's always fascinating. But it, it does. They want to shut it down here, they, them. But part of the idea is also that, you know, it's not alien. We have no idea what it is, but it's not alien. Well, I think you mentioned, how, how can you say that? If you, you yeah, know, because if, if you don't know what it is and you exactly. have no clue where it's coming from, then isn't it foreign or alien to you? It, it is. A, it, you, you're, 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 you know, I'm not discrediting anybody, but it's like, you know, I, I really. Right. Why would you know? Right, you know, right. We have, like we have the Webb telescope, and it's sure looking like it's finding life out there. It's finding those elements, those things that are created by biology. You know, these uh, all these different interesting things in the in the clouds yeah. around the planet, so far away. And and they're saying, you know, it's like, it, at what point do you bridge that? That you know, no, there's no evidence of aliens. Okay, if there's no evidence of aliens in, in here. Then it comes down to the same thing. It's like, to, is if there's technology. If, if we can see something out there, they can probably see us, I would think. We, we might be right. interesting. We might not be. I don't know. But right. if we're interesting, which I think we are, it's like they're going to find, you know, being advanced, they're going to find a way to get here and take a look. It's like, why is that a conspiracy? Why is that weird? Why is that strange? It shouldn't be strange at all. It's like, and we why is it protected? That, that doesn't make sense. Yeah. No, there, there's no, there's no, it's, it's not a, like I said, I don't know where and why alien, the idea of life visiting us is, is, is a conspiracy. It, it's like really when you think about it on its face at the most basic level, why is it? Why why would you you know again? Why would you spend any effort trying to disprove it? it it's like you know again right. yeah maybe okay that, that that doesn't make any sense. That's fine. You're seeing things that aren't there. Whatever. whatever. Unless but it spend so much work trying to disprove. I I, I why I, think, I, I don't get it. I think the possibility exists that they're trying to disprove it so people don't believe because maybe they do have something and they want to keep it under wraps. 
there, there, there's probably a, I'll think of like a story. It's kind of funny about the way the way I look at all this kind of thing about how control and how things are supposed to be done is my my son. I think he was in seventh grade or something like that. And, and he was going through and he was working on some project and he's talking about he says, well, all I need to do is be able to get the keywords for Google so I can find my answer. And I'm like, no, 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 you got to do your research. You got, but at the end of the day, no, you're exactly right. I'm completely wrong. That's the way the world is right now. You need to know how to get to that information. It doesn't matter how you get to it. Yeah. When I was getting courses, encyclopedias were him. It's, it's, it's Google. And then, and then now he's, you know, figure out how to do that better. But it, it's, it's that. And, and you look at the government, they can only claim ignorance and don't look over here for so long. Oh, you know, 30% of the population. Yeah. Whatever it said. Yep. You're right. But when it comes to the reality of things, like people are, uh, you know, just, just, you can't slow down technology and you can't, the, the, it, it, it falls apart. You know, it just, it, anybody just wants to spend some time. There's enough out there that at least leaves the question. Like I said, it's, it's kind of fun when I talk to people, every so often whatever about you know maybe about something else and they bring up oh well you're jesse marcel that's familiar or you whatever and it, it's it's kind of things and they, they said yeah you know it's not it, it's not related to the, one of the companies i have but they said and they, they said much about you but so, well after, with all this going on we are big believers and it seems like overall people are the consciousness around the idea of alien life and visiting here is going way up and the stronger that gets you can only fight that so far with misinformation or you know, I, I think I think the, the the report's somewhat honest, saying it's not alien life. We just don't know what it is. Well, I believe that we don't know what it is part, but if right. you don't know what Same it is, here. you know. So see, I'm right. open to I'm open to the idea that there may be alien life out there because of the vastness of our interstellar universe. It's right. just. It's uncanny to believe that we are only the only sentient race out there. I don't, I, I can't accept that. It's too much empty space, let's say. Okay. I was like that one thing. That's the the line from contact. Yeah. Right. If, if, if it turns out that there is absolutely nothing else, no one else out there in the universe, it sure is a hell of a waste of space. It, I, I love right. that. Go, going even further back than that, it was like, uh, was it like, uh, what show? It's like life will find a way, you know, mm -hmm. from that the dinosaur Jurassic movie. Park. Life will find a way, and yeah. what a beautiful statement! I never came up with that. It's like it, life will find a way. It, it's uh, it's like there's it, when you boil down to life, it, it's like what, the way we, we the way life we 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 determine if it's, if something's living or not is the way it exhales, the way it releases energy. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of funny, but a rock in the sun at night releases energy, <laughs> you know. So what exactly is life when it comes right down to it? But it, it's just, right. it, you know, it, it's just, I get it. It's so much bigger and broader. And it's just, it's just small minds getting in the way of the truth, in my opinion, at some level. And yeah, it's like there's, there isn't, it, it, it wouldn't make sense in this universe or, and I believe in the, you know, this, the, there's, there's enough science that it makes sense that, you know, the multiverse, whether it's the same universe and different you know, dimensional realities of some kind, whatever that would be. It just doesn't make sense that, uh, that, you know, there isn't life here. It, it makes no sense at all. You know, it, it, it you know, numerically it, it it's, it, it'd be right. such a stretch to say we're all at the stair, you know, it just doesn't make any sense. There's, there's too much, I may mean, find, you know, there's nowhere on this earth, even a volcano, you can't find life. It's like, you know, that's harsher than, like, I think they even said they found something, might've found something on Venus. And it's kind of like those extreme conditions and if life can exist there, it could be anywhere, you know. Right, Nas. Yeah. Um, you know, when it, a big part of, of what we're talking about here is that the government is never going to be the source of the truth. No, right. They never have. They in the entire history, they have never disclosed anything. They've only ever been caught, <laughs> and they continue denying until you reach that breaking point with the evidence in the public's face that they say, oh yeah, we had to protect it, national security, whatever, right? But the, the truth is only gonna come from people who open their minds to possibilities and say, let's look at what we could do to research this. Let's look at how we can put together more information. What can we do to build data that stands in the way of this?
right? And like with the Roswell incident, you know, your grandfather found a lot of metallic debris. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this balloon thing that they're talking about afterwards, you know, they show pictures with that mylar foil that it's supposedly right. made from. But that later report that they have about the the missing military project balloon, those were neoprene. Right. They weren't the mylar units, right? So and the mobile balloon metallic. couldn't be what actually fell in that territory. They, they, had, they had a string of balloons above it, of these, yeah. of these old things. What I, I, I love is like, you see some of those pictures of some of my grandfather were in, you know, holding the pieces of stuff and, and other mm -hmm. people. But you can look at the background, they, they have, you know, this is the stuff we brought in and they'll show a, a wrapper for a balloon. You know, at the envelope they come in. It's like, how many times do they send up the envelope for the blue and along with their, I mean, it's just preposterous. It's kind of ridiculous, but, yeah. you right. know, it, it's funny. But one thing my grandfather said was that in those pictures, there was actually a little bit of real debris. And we've studied those to the nth degree, trying to find something. But it, but he he, he, he did say that, say that one time that it was, a, like I said, when he when he walked in that room, he realized, you know, he walked in there thinking, excited, that, hey, they're going to talk to the world. We're going we're gonna to show the world what we have. I mean, when you turn the corner of the room, you realize, no, this is just, you know, what he thought it would be, which was basically something that was going to disappear. Yeah. Right. Well, a good uh, tactic on including some real debris in with the other stuff. If anyone ever got polygraphed, they could say, we showed you real debris from the wreck. That's, that's right. a good point. I don't, I've, never, I've never heard that before. That's, that's an interesting idea. You're probably right. Alfredo says, our humanity is a little baby in this infinite universe for sure. Alfredo's right. Okay. Yeah, we're we are very young, very innocent in the world and the universe. You know, um, Snoops in one hundred wants to know which part of the famous picture of the debris was the real stuff. Good question. <laughs> I don't have an answer. I know it's not. Is you know when he's holding his hands is not. You know, I've right. always looked at some of the some of those pieces of those things on the, on the floor maybe. You know, or I don't know if it's behind them where you can't even see it. I'm not so I, I I don't know. You know, maybe one of those blues got in the way of the disc and got brought down with the disc. You know, yeah. you never know. So maybe both of them were together. You never know. There, you know, they're like again. There's well, anyway. Yeah, it's, yeah. That's conjecture and speculation, but at least I was giving an idea. Out there. That's good enough ideas. As good as good as the rest of them. <laughs> yeah. Um, Let's see here. I want to check to see if we have any more questions from the peanut gallery, and we'll, we'll go from there. Uh, Nos, do you want to continue? Yeah. Um, so I was I was wondering for you, what do you um, envision is a, a path where society actually becomes more accepting? You know, the government's going to keep causing friction in the process of people coming to terms with being part of a larger reality. But what do you think from a social standpoint, you know, socialization, anthropology, what do you think it's going to take to to get people to just let go of that and, and move forward? You know, I, I think it's happening, but it's just, you, just, you, don't, you, 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 you can't be told what to think. Right. You know, I think you got to you got to remove that. It's like you just treat it like, yeah, that's an opinion. Good. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever you're, you know, the, but treat it like that, even with because you have no idea where it's coming from and what the, what the person is. I, I think it's going to be a natural evolution. It, it's it's one of those things. I think it's just a matter of the more evolved humanity becomes. It's, it's as long as assuming we don't destroy ourselves is that you start, you know, I, I think that. You know, the, the way our brain works, way, the way we function, the way we interpret information is changing. Is that we, we, you know, they talk about, well, technology is moving so fast. Well, part of that is because our, our, our brains, are, we're, we're evolving very quickly on, on different levels. And we're getting, yeah. we're getting help, you know, through technology. But at the end of the day, it's, it's like, I, I just think it's a, that we're, we're constantly evolving and, and we're able to, our brains should be able to process faster and quicker. And as long as we're willing to, again, be open to the idea that, that some of those feelings we have, you know, what's a feeling, you know, what's an emotion, what's causing that. And that it's, it, it should be so much more complex than what it's, you know, than what it's being, in, you know, representing whatever. So I, you know, it's, it's a hard question to answer, but I think that the more open you become to the possibility of, 
you know, an intelligent universe uh, that all everything around you. I mean, all the answers I, I like, like, uh, I just think that we're fed information all the time. If it's, if we're willing to open that door, I think it's all around us and you know, you're willing to feel it, willing to, um, you know, not deny it. I'm not quite sure if that, if that makes sense, but it's just, I, yeah. I, I think that, I think everything is around us and, and the more open we are as a society, as a humanity, um, mm -hmm. what's, what's interesting, you go back to like, uh, again, some, some countries that are, they're less developed. But in another sense, they're far more developed than we are, you know, uh, in, in the sense of, of, of mind and and peace and those kind of things. And then all this, it's it's like they they're willing to celebrate these odd things. You know, they say something in the sky, something that lands, something's unknown. They celebrate it. They think this is amazing. This is something fascinating. And I, I break it down to like my where my grandfather was and his his thing was, you know, he went through some tough times in his life. But at the end of the day, he thought he was lucky. He was he was on the ground at this place. Yeah. And of all of people around the world, he was there. And he always thought that was an incredible gift, an amazing thing that he was that, you know, was, was that person and you know said this someone's from here. But mm -hmm. so kind of in that same way, it, it's like it's like I guess, you know, I'm, I'm just spitballing here, but you know, a, a child's innocence, if we could reach that child's innocence about wonderment of the universe, we'd go so much further it's like whatever is you know what is blocking that that's the thing is we got to keep removing those elements that cause the blocking you know there remains let's us stay innocent and not and not become you know what you know innocent to the to the idea of what's available out there in the universe or here or anywhere but i think it's i think it flows through us everything i mean i think this you know thought was thought you know it's like it's like all these things are around us whether it's from here the you know the, the all this you know throughout the universe it's 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 a fascinating thing it's like i, I the biggest thing i think the, the the biggest mistake you can make is by saying there's no chance that has that's real because you don't right. know you know it's like right. it's right. infinite number right. of possibilities you know it's like it's like the right. more you know <laughs> i have to go back to one of your comments uh, about expanding of consciousness you know expand mm -hmm. expansion of the human psyche I think some people are at that point now, mm -hmm. but I think most of the population is dumbed down and jaded uh, on yeah. programming that is part of a psyop with the whatever the U.S. government, the sure. mainstream media. You know, every day we're we're taught something, we're told something, we're we're programmed into believing. Hey, we need to go out and buy this new car. Or we need to go out and buy this new coat. Or Jesse needs a new hat, you know, with a UFO man symbol on. Yeah. Or, <laughs> or, or something like that, you know. We're programmed into certain boxes. And yes. there are some people that are able to look outside the box, some who are not. Uh, I think NOS has a good, good vision on the dumbing down process. No, uh, I know. NOS... Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's part of this greater web of influence. And it's it's one of those things where, you know, people don't want to believe an individual thing. So they really don't want to believe a network of big things that are all connected to each other. Of course. Um, so when you look at what's going on with social engineering, you have the anti-intellectualism coming along, right? And you look at, through the social engineering, the influence with regard to what foods people are willing to eat mm -hmm. without consideration for the impact on their body, Tylenol. what medicines they're being subjected to, the chemicals that are going into the food generation supply, you know, not just the pesticides, but the fertilizers, everything on top of genetically modified stuff that, you know, even with the, the individual chemical components that are all part of this thing across the board, you know, we already have white papers on individual components of this equation having neg negative cognitive potential effects, right? You know, and it's like, okay, so this particular, you know, not naming names for companies, but this particular pharmaceutical that's laced into almost everything in the cold and flu section at the store, happens to be something that will, you know, erode a person's memory capacity, 
right? And you have other ones that reduce your, your cognitive inventory, right? How big of a thought can you hold? Like how big of a number can you add to another number in your head? Right? How much can you keep track of? You know, it's like the things going into and off of a bus. How much can you keep track of? How's your mental inventory? And, you know, hand-eye coordination, reaction, there's, there's all these different parts of cognitive processes with countless white papers on them on things that exist in our environment that we know causes negative effects. And even if it's only, you know, one and a half or two percent per thing, there are wow. hundreds of these, mm -hmm. right, that are saturating our environment. And you look at the social engineering effects that are going to encourage people yeah. to participate in the things that are going to reduce their cognitive potential. And then you have a network that establishes this is purely intentional. This is completely controlled at a very high level because the food supply is theoretically separate from the pharmaceutical industry, is theoretically separate from the manufacturing and textiles industry, you know, and all of these other things. Uh, but once you start seeing that there's just, these things are connected, you start following who's in charge of those companies officially and who's actually not on the boards, but they're key shareholders, right? Because the shareholders don't run the company officially, but right. they're making plays. And you start finding that all these companies that are parts of these different equations start leading back to the same people at the top. Well, it's, it's interesting. You, you cannot, I mean, if you want to maintain power in a society, you know, definitely intellectualism is not a positive thing. It, the, you know, the more dumbed down you keep people, the more yeah repressed. The, you know, and again, yeah, I'm 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 no fan of the pharmaceuticals. You know, there's there's things. I mean, there are some good work, of course, but there's also yeah, things no, that are meant to be. You know, that are, you know, it's it, not a cure, it's a treatment. You know, those kind of things. There's no money. There's not money in a cure. There's money in treatment. And it's yeah. just a. It's just a. It's just a. You know, a, until we get to a, a level of you know of of trying to build a, a better society so to speak yeah. um these will exist and i i and i i really think that we're kind of at a tipping point it's like you you get to the point where you're trying to control everything from even the way you you think even the way you 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 mentioned the, yeah. from food to mm -hmm. you know the the idea like like this uh you know what's going on in the latest vaccines are actually Right. changing you it's not just fighting something it's actually changing you and to think that you're gonna that it's only going to affect you for a few months is it's, it's really not the way it works it's it's, it's a different right. protein structure that's being manipulated throughout your system and either the, it, it could either end up being a very good thing or a very very bad thing and unfortunately i think history is teaching that things usually turn out bad but yeah. it, it's just it's a matter of you know you don't you don't maintain your power your influence by being good to all your subjects, you yeah. know, and, and unfortunately that's, you know, it's been it's, since the time of the kingdoms and et cetera, it's always been that way. And I, I always look at it. It's like, how do you cross that bridge where you try to build a society of, you know, it, it, a, a, a more open society, a more, a one that's more, you know, can be out of themselves where, where they're, they're, they're not, you know, the whole idea is to become better. Um, and that's through, you know, intelligence and understanding and those kind of things and, and the and the, the preciousness of life and all those kind of things. Right. And, and how do you get there? And I don't think you can get there. Like saying, how do we evolve with a system that's against that? And, and how do you how do you get out of that system? And, I, and that's a question. And as, as, as far as how bad AI is, AI, AI doesn't have a will. You know, it's not it doesn't have unless it's given one to do a certain thing. Otherwise, it's pure yeah. information. And. Mm -hmm as things evolve on that level it's like well it makes sense that you know that that human if frailty component needs to be removed and that frailty is the idea of having to control a society you know like like mm -hmm. try to but you still have to have the will it's like everything it's 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 kind of interesting like you you go down what's you know can you remove somebody's will and keep their happiness can they put people who have with no will and you know the idea that i want to live a certain life it's like well every everything from you know down to a a tree or a blade of grass wants to populate, increase its its area, whatever. It's just it's just part of life, and how how does that all mix in? But 
until we can evolve. And it, it feels like we're going backwards. You know, how do, how do we evolve to the point where none of it makes any difference? You know, none of, none, none of those things we hold on to as truths are really, you know, they, they, in, the, in the grand scheme of things are so import, unimportant, you know, yeah. but it's tough. It's, it's different for everybody, of course, but. Yeah. Uh, the Chronicles of Stillwater said that paradigms are hard to give up until you are shaken to your core and are able to see behind the veil. I think that's a good comment. Yes. And, 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 that, and, and maybe that's kind of at the heart of it. People need to be woken up. They need, they got, they yeah. can't, keep, can't, but in the right up. way. <laughs> yeah. You, you can't just be, <laughs> you need, you need to be open to possibilities and, and just, it, again, it's almost like you gotta, you gotta determine what, what is simply society and what is actually meaning, you know, that kind of thing. There's yeah, usually two different. Yeah. So it's like, how do you separate those? I mean, I, you know, I, I think is, you know, we are evolving in a way and I, I think that's going to keep going. And as, as long as we don't, get too selfish or a portion gets too selfish then we'll get beyond that and then we'll live in a, a in a much more evolved society and once we can get there then we're gonna our evolution is gonna go like wildfire it's gonna go crazy you know as soon as we can start breaking down those barriers that are holding us back right now and that's and that's all for you know control and power and whatever sure. but as soon as we get as soon as we resolve it you know it's it, it, obviously as, as a as a population or whatever you know, we, we are the ones that have the power. It's like, it's like, are you going to, uh, when are you going to stop giving all that up? And it might just be not, not, not on a paperwork or a lifestyle, but it's actually giving it up and, and letting yourself become a lot more than you are, you know? Um, yep. Oh, I want to give a shout out to Alfredo. Thank you for coming, Alfredo. Um, uh, yeah. Thanks for dropping in from all the way from France. And we hope to see you again. Yes. Definitely. Okay. Um, going back to a little bit here, when we were talking before the live stream, I, w I mentioned a comment to you about the Roswell uh, weather balloon. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is I said to you, why would they put the Roswell weather balloon under guard in this mm -hmm. building? So, and you answered what? Oh, yeah. It, it's it's back to, back to the idea of you wouldn't. You know, the, there there were there were. I guess we did talk about. There's there, there, they put little brass tax tags on all these balloons when they went up, because they knew they're gonna go, they're gonna go up in the jet stream. They're gonna get blown around, and some kid was gonna be out there fishing or hunting or whatever and find one. And that was part of the deal. Is that it, you find ways things. The tag has a little number on it you return it, you get five bucks. And a lot of times it's not even told to return all of the apparatus. Just there's a, there's a little recorder in it. Bring that back, the rest of it, just throw it away. And that goes back because that's what was listing, you know, for overseas nuclear explosions. So that was it. So they're, they're, they didn't even keep the things. There's no value in it. There's, it doesn't mean, it's not meaningful. But right. yet they took what they found out there and put it in a hangar. And this is yeah, where it that, launched. It's like, under guard, it doesn't make sense. No, it, 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 it doesn't. I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot of very smart people. I mean, that was the nuclear bombing program. You had at the time, the smartest individuals concentrated in that area because we were fighting for the existence of humanity at that time. The thought was anyway, and that was, you know, and that's, so you had nothing but the best of the best at that place. And think that all of a sudden the best of the best had no clue what they were doing or what they were looking at, even though right. air balloons were, were launched every other day from that base. The, all these programs were right there, and all of a sudden, for nobody to get any of this stuff. Like again, it, it kind of comes down to, it's a huge conspiracy. Everybody goes in on it, and, and we're going to trick the world for no reason at all, and and, and do it. it. It it's like I said, it's 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 truly missing. You know the lot. There's no logic in it. It it, it can't make any sense. So, um, can you allude a little bit to uh, your new your projects that you're working on in this regard yes please the it, uh, just in general yeah well um part of this it, what, what i've been doing for the last last 14 years about 13 years something like that <laughs> is I, I have a knack at uh ideas to to, to change things um and one of those is is 
it, it, it might have evolved from growing up with with Roswell stuff. It, it's just like is it, is creating a new kind of propulsion system, and so I've spent a lot of time basically ideal uh, getting the ideas, conceptualizing it, creating a workable examples of it, patenting it, and then creating companies around it. And that that's 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 my day job, so to speak. So I, I've so some of these ideas are how we can change the way propulsion works, and it's all. It wasn't it, the intention. Honestly, wasn't this? I'd be saying I'd be lying if I did say it. But it's it's all very it's all electric. There, the, everything I do has, has has evolved. You know, it is 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 a future way to get around from point A to point B within the atmosphere. But also, as 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 those ideas are evolving, an idea of how to pass how how to go from point A to point B anywhere in the world, anywhere in the universe. Excuse me, and. It's all based on, on on some very sound scientific principles. So I do that, and uh, um, again, this is getting way off subject. But part of what I've done is we designed this propulsion system, right? Designed a propulsion system, and as the as the world's evolving in the idea of how do we power things anymore? How are we going to get out of the the combustion type idea and go and move into you know electric energy? Um, I I took a propulsion which turned out to be very very efficient, very super efficient compared to what's out there. And I reversed it, and I made uh, a wind turbine out of it. Doesn't look like any kind of wind turbine you've ever seen, but uh, I, I, through Billy and Cuppy around it, bringing in the right people, and this is not all me. It's not, there's a lot of very smart people, smarter than me, that came in to help this stuff happen. But now we have huge companies that are like Maya, and I, I'm on Siemens. Have you heard of Siemens? They're very large. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 there's a, a big a podcast that they had me come on. We just and we're just in their latest magazine, and it's about the technology I developed that will completely change the way the wind turbines work. They're, they'll no longer be like anything like you see out there. Um, and it's it, it's kind of a fun place to be. It wasn't where I intended to be, but it's a creative. It's a way of capturing energy. Um, that's that's, that's uh, not entirely different, but a way to a way to leverage energy in the in the in our surroundings and be able to use that with zero effect on the uh, you know, everything around you. So it's kind yeah. of exciting. We're looking at at, at solving. I mean, uh, you know, small small islands that have no re real infrastructure. We can bring power to them. To yeah. even here, where you the the idea that that uh, you know a small community in in a, in a in a crazy world, you might want to have your own. You want to be decoupled from. The grid because it can be affected. Okay. Well, our technology is is compact and powerful that would decouple it so towns whatever can yeah. run up what we've invented and then it could it could be used to completely evolve and and take away this these monstrous things out there that are are, are horrible waste actually. Now, see that being the case, it surprises me to no end that you haven't been shut down yet because it is so compact and affordable and it is so mind blowingly life-changing for it could be for so many people it really surprises me that you haven't been shut down i invented a magnetic propulsion system when i was nine years old my father and i sent it to ford and uh, we instantly got shut down because it worked well there there is like what i think it's it's because it, where we're at today is that a lot of these big companies you know uh you know bp uh, exxon these monstrous companies mm -hmm. they see yeah. it coming oh and, yeah and, and 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 it's like they they realize that they by, they can't shut down who's coming, and because of that, they'd rather do do they fight it or do they go along with it? And right now, right. that's what's happening is these companies are deciding that that this is the future, and, and they have to roll. Mm -hmm. Back in 1984, they fought me. They fought me so hard. <laughs> it, they're they're my my grandfather is a very very much. It's yeah, at the time it wasn't, but he created he 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 uh, wrote a patent and got a patent around. Uh, a connection for a television set, being able to run mm -hmm. multiple cores and whatever it was, and and he actually he actually went out and got the patent on it, and uh, it's it's kind of exciting. But then I forgot one of the big, you know, I don't want to say the name because I might get in trouble. But a major company came along and did it. Now they could have been working on it the same right. idea, you know, another, but he had it, he owned it, he protected mm -hmm. it, but mm -hmm. shut him out. He never got anything from it, and he actually he and so. It's, it's kind of you know same thing like he it was fascinating he did this kind of stuff my dad did this kind of stuff and I'm kind of following in their shoes you know and and doing and doing this I mean this it's in a very exciting place for, to be it's not it's it's like the the I didn't come out to start to try to revolutionize you know wind turbines or whatever but right. it just happened to work out that way you know and it, it's it's all fun I mean it's it, it's exciting but we it's 
it feels good because I went out, I, I went in for designing, you know, more of the flying vehicles, electric flying vehicles, not the right. stuff you see out there, but actually true what, what you'd envision as being a, a flying vehicle when you're a kid. Right. Kind of. And That's then it, gotcha. it's, it's through all that work that all of a sudden, you know, a, a motor is a generator, generator is a motor, just depends how you push it. And as we became so efficient in all, our, in all the research that now we just applied that out. And so it's, it's kind of fun. And it's, it's fun to be recognized by these huge companies that, yeah. are, that, right. are, that are now promoting us. So. So and it's, it's cool. Going. It's cool that we're friends with someone who's got his finger on the pulse of advancements. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, and we, we were talking about earlier about you know some you know like our government. We don't know what it is. We don't know what's out there. It's we just know it's not alien, which is kind of ridiculous. It's like if you don't know, you can't say that statement. You can't say, it, yeah. But right. Because I'm I'm not absolutely plugged in. I'm not be all in all this kind of stuff. But you do, you have to be aware of other technologies out there in, in electromagnetics, like you're talking about magnetics. You're aware of what's out there because you have to be involved in all the patents out there about this kind of thing. And governments write patents, militaries write patents, they all, they all do this stuff. And it's so, not that I'm, you know, I know all there is to know about it, but it's interesting for something that's so crazy that's out there that there's no evidence of it anywhere. In, in, in when it comes down to a country's owning it or you know whatever anybody's owning it so right so it's not like i said it's at the end of the day it's not that complicated but um again it's it's people trying to maintain control and etc yeah. but it, what's what's interesting also like that, that back to that point i'm just thinking here out loud is that the tighter the grip gets which is happening right now the closer right. you are to losing it all yeah, and I think you can see that happening right now is that things are getting kind of ridiculous and it's getting tighter and tighter. And eventually it's just it's just going to fall apart. And it's just, you know, there's so many things about the. I, I think that that is the evolutionary cycle. Is it is it what it's going to be some tight that people are just going to say, you know, I, what are you, I don't believe anything you're saying at this point. And I think we're getting there about some stuff. And then that's where evolution <laughs> takes place is that you, you can't you, your grip gets too tight. And, you know, by a, a governing body or, you know, whatever it is. But uh, right. Um, so as far as thoughts go, but yeah, it's all, and I, um, I'm doing that. I, I kind of, I've, I, I've kind of made a, a little decision in my life about, uh, I, I, I like doing this kind of thing. I kind of got out of it a little bit because I've been doing so much in the, in the, in, in tech and getting that all involved. But I thought, how could I be involved, but yet pay for research and do this kind of thing. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm launching a little, uh, a company that has, we just sell games and jewelry and, just novelty stuff just based on all these all this kind of thing so it's a lot of fun and actually a lot of people are excited about it so it's it's, it's just kind of a way to, to to kind of bridge um, the gap can you drop the link jesse to that company that you just spoke of oh and sure. or, or you could put it in our chat room ah uh, okay just, okay chat with everyone in the studio can i put it right there yep yeah yeah, I got it. I got Odessa's you. got it. No problem. So good. Now we can should, advertise your merch. I look to make sure it's all it's all up, but it should be. But it's not. But anyway, but it's it's, it's actually it, it's it's just kind of I'm tr I'm trying to go into all this stuff for fun, if that makes sense, and not get bogged down. Right. Not be, not, I, I you know it, it's just, it's just like how how do you stay in touch with this stuff? So, and I have a, it, this, it's kind of like you get so into the, uh, the mind numbing number crunching and, you know, all those things that go on to my day job. And then, you know, and so I just, it's just like, well, you know, how can I have fun with this stuff? So that's what, that's what all this stuff is. It's also, it's going to be all based on, you know, I'm uh, doing TV stuff and movie stuff or whatever coming out. So there, I'm, I'm doing different things for different places, but it's, again, this is all kind of fun. Uh, Renee Cruz says Jesse Marcel the third rocks. I totally well, know. thank you. <laughs> we agree. We, we totally agree. agree. Delsa answered back. So everybody, <laughs> well, hey, it's, a lot, it's a lot of fun. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, We're really so. glad to have you. We've really been enjoying this. It's, it's been um, enlightening and engaging educational and fun at the same time. So thank you so much for being such an awesome guest. Oh, yes. thank you. No, awesome. you on your show. Yeah. Last comment. Last comment. Uh, I, I am grateful for the sake of our audience 
for them to to hear someone like you who you know you're you're clearly deeply embedded with logic reasoning science right. and 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 saying you know look let's just keep following wherever it leads mm -hmm. and, and, and instead of pulling the wizard of oz nothing to see here don't look right. behind the curtain right and and just the 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 normal communication that you know you're you're a guy you're living a life you're doing your thing you know you're not outlandish uh this is this is just life this is just your real experiences the the authentic life that you've experienced and i think that's what the audience can benefit most from being exposed to yes uh the veracity of your claim you know the uh data that you have provided the experiences you have provided I thank you for all of that. And the fact that you're a friend of the channel, Jesse, thank you very much. Well, thank you. I, I, I appreciate it. Anytime, really any, anytime you're available to come back, we would love to have you back. Okay, yes, sure. I, Absolutely. I wanted to reach out to you before convention season started because I know you're going to be busy. So I, I really don't do much of that stuff, but you know, who knows, uh, you know, but if, if you ever just stay in touch and, yeah, I mean, there's always some fun stuff going on somewhere. Okay, we'll stay in touch and we'll uh, notify you of any future dates that are coming up. Maybe we'll pair you up with someone else and we can talk we'll about talk sure. about some other aspects of either Roswell or other situations in regards to the UFO phenomenon. I'd like to get him and like... I don't know, somebody like Avi, somebody who's like very science based, like talking. But that's just my inner nerd coming. Oh, out. Ozzy Osbourne? Yeah, I love that too. Oh, no, I said Avi, like Avi Loeb, but yeah. Avi I Loeb, I was thinking Ozzy Osbourne. I'd like that myself. That'd but. be great. I mean, if we can get Ozzy, I'll take it. I'll take it. I, 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 I did a show with Ozzy one time and his son. That was kind of fun. Oh, nice. oh, we but, have a question in the audience. I'm so sorry, but about the game that you've got, that you, you were talking about that game. Oh, yeah. Um, what, what can we search for? Is there a link? Can we just do a quick Google just, search that, for abstract, it? just it's 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 all at that company. I better it's look you mind if I abstract, abstract, abstract search. Search. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me I, I, I apologize. I'm doing this and looking as we're it's on the fine. show. Okay, it is up. Okay, yeah, it is up. I, I just want to make sure it's brand new. It's literally okay. they okay. Not, not tested, but yeah, if you go to us, it's all it's all on there. And, and there's kind of a a fun little description of all that kind of stuff. Check it out. Uh, we just interviewed Avi last week, so I misinterpreted what she said. But uh, in regards to Ozzy, I rode in a limo with him once out in Vermont. Oh, yeah? So, yeah, I was hitchhiking to do my laundry because I was working at a camp for kids out there. Uh -huh. And a limo came around the corner and stopped. And I, I walked up to it, and it was Ozzy Osbourne, his wife, and uh, the limo driver. Oh, how cool is that? <laughs> yeah, so I got to ride with Ozzy Osbourne, the man himself. Well, that, that was awesome. But it was when I was uh, 17 years old, so he was way younger than oh. he is now. <laughs> Good but, guy, though. I, 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 I enjoyed his – there. it was a lot of fun. When the he's brief, totally brief. different from his on-stage persona. Oh, yeah, of course. It, 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 yeah. it, the, the, the short little bit I was with him was they were talking about UFOs. Actually, that they were in Roswell or something. So we were kind of gabbing on their show about it, but it was kind of fun. He's like, he was coming in from being, I don't really believe this to that. Well, wait, maybe there's something to this. Then all of a sudden, well, maybe there is. You know, it's so kind of funny. Fun. He was evolving his thought process as he's going through the whole thing. But uh, I Seriously, mean, Jesse, I'm, that would be a blast to have you and Ozzy Osbourne talking about UFOs. I can't, like, oh, I'm going to be a fly on the wall. <laughs> that, that would break okay. the internet. I'm telling you. It would you, break it would the internet. Break the inter it would break the internet. Jesse Marcel. Oh, my gosh. That would be Ozzy funny. Osbourne. I'd love the hell out of that. That'd be cool. <laughs> Anyways, be yeah, I want to thank everybody on the panel for being here this evening, uh -huh. especially Jesse for taking – uh, time out of this busy schedule to be here. I really appreciate it, Jesse. Thank yeah, you. I'm happy to do it. And everybody in the chat, everybody in the chat, you guys are yeah, out. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, everybody in the chat for engaging. So many questions tonight. It was great. I am sorry if I didn't get to everybody's question, we but did we tried. We did um, 
Hopefully you'll come back next week. Same channel, same station. We do have another interesting guest coming up uh, by the name of Richard Doty. He used to work for the United States Air Force Office of Special Investigations as a counterintelligence agent who was assigned to infiltrate UFO groups and spread disinformation. He admits to that. But he also admits that UFOs are real and that he was read into the program. So we're going to be talking about that at length. So I hope you can be with us. And uh, we'll see you next, next week on Wednesday at 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can adjust your time zone according to that. Thanks for being here. And we'll see you next week. Thanks, everybody. Bye, y'all.